We're dressed up a little bit. We're not wearing tuxedos and things like that because this is meant to be a party, all right? That's why you got both fish and chicken, because it's a party. Um, and afterwards, we're going to have a chance to get on the dance floor. We're going to have a chance to hang together and fellowship, just like we should do, because we are, after all, a family, okay? All right, so with that out of the way, let's get started. Um, I am going to introduce our first speaker, uh, who will be introducing our rising stars, and that is Colleen Cox. Where are you? There you are. Now, Colleen is the college's new uh, Director of Alumni Engagement and Entrepreneurial Activities, and we'll start us off. You can clap for her, too. And we'll start us tonight with Rising Stars. All right. How long have you been here now, officially? Since February, but you've been here longer because you're an alum. I'm an alum. There you go. There you go. Perfect. All right. The floor is yours. Thank you. And by the way, Charles hired me and now he's leaving. So just a little FYI. Um, as um, Dean Isbell said, I am Colleen Cox. I'm making sure I find my page and I don't miss anything. Um, this is my first year as the Director of Alumni Engagement, and I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you. I've had the opportunity to meet quite a few of you over the past couple of days, and it's been fabulous. I'm really excited to be a part of all of this. The College of Computing has a wide range of talented alumni in every age group. Our Rising Star Award honors the best of our younger alumni, those who have made an outstanding impact in early parts of their career. Our first rising star this year is Candace Mitchell. Um, she has a BS 2011. Candace is building the future of hair care. Her company, Mayavani, uses an artificial intelligence algorithm to analyze hair type and texture and then to make personalized hair care recommendations. In the past few years, Candace has been named one of Forbes 30 under 30, as well of, as one of Women's Wear Daily's top 50 beauty innovators under 40, and one of Georgia Tech's 40 under 40. Mayavana has been featured in Essence Magazine, Ebony Magazine, Marie Claire, and Business Insider. Candace, please come to the stage and accept your rise. Um, you all have no idea how much this means to me, so I hope you can feel my heart bursting right now. <laughs> um, because um, when I stepped onto the campus of Georgia Tech, I was stepping into my destiny. Um, I was seeking God about my purpose in life, and he showed me how it lied at the intersection of me being a black woman computer scientist who wanted to empower women through their hair and also change the world. And Georgia Tech was the best place for me to do that. I think my daughter is very inspired right now as well. <laughs> That's what it's about, right? The next generation. Go Jackets, <laughs> future Yellow Jackets. Um, but during my time at Tech, it definitely was not easy. I actually struggled a lot. So to know that later in life I would be honored as a rising star is very amazing. Um, I had a lot of many, battle, many battles to fight, but what I learned through this experience was that battles only come against you as your greatness is coming out. And so your battles are not meant for you to give up. It's meant for you to break through so that you can become who you're called to be. And that was my experience at Georgia Tech. So I really want to thank everyone who helped me pull out my greatness. I want to thank God for guiding me every day. I want to thank my parents who helped me every time I called. I want to thank my uncle, Alan, who, gave, who brought us our first computer. That's when I fell in love with software and operating systems. <laughs> And I knew that I wanted to also create software, but how could I create something that I was passionate about and it just happened to be my hair? And wanting to solve this problem that many people have with finding the right products so we can be our best confident selves. 
and that happened through my experience at Georgia Tech. I want to thank Merrick, um, who really helped me see how I was called to serve the bigger world around me. Um, studying abroad at Barcelona, studying entrepreneurship and algorithms, and later opening the doors to Flashpoint, where we started Mayavana. I'm very thankful for that and grateful for that. Um, I want to thank Chris Klaus for building the Klaus Advanced Computing Building, where I started my undergraduate research. Um, Dean Charles, Cedric, and Jennifer for making the College of Computing the best place to be to learn. Um, I want to thank Gordon, Mayor Andre Dickens, Cynthia, Adria for making OMED a safe space for us to learn and to fail and to make sure we pass our classes. <laughs> I want to thank Ellen Zagura um, for starting the Computing for Good course, which was my senior a capstone class because I saw how computing is not only just to make multi-billion dollar companies like Mayavana, but to also make the world a better place. And I think that is our charge right now, to make the world a better place. And I want to thank the people who helped me uh, become a leader, Kim Harrington, Erica Moore, um, as I was president of the African American Student Union and also a leader through Delta Sigma Theta. Uh, these are all the experience that helped me become the woman I am today. So I just want to close by saying, don't doubt yourself. <laughs> you may be honored by the Hall of Fame one day. <laughs> and so, and to remember that the world needs your greatness as well. So see every battle as an opportunity to pull that out and to take every thought captive, every negative thought that does not align with the greatness of who you are. That's what I realized, that my negative thoughts were holding me back. And so as I broke through and finally graduated, I realized that I could really become who I was called to be. So I just want to thank you all for this honor. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Candace. Our second um, rising star is Mr. Henry Shi. He got his MS in 2018. He is the co-founder and chief operating officer of Super, a mobile commerce and financial technology company. Under his leadership, Super has grown to over 30 million users and exceeded 1 billion in sales. Prior to his getting his master's degree, Henry graduated in the top 1% of his class at the University of Waterloo. Henry was also named one of Forbes's 30 under 30 and one of Georgia Tech's 40 under 40. Please welcome Henry Shi. Hey everybody, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Uh, nobody told me I was supposed to give a speech, so apologies if it's a little ad hoc. But um, I, I come from a little bit of a different background. Um, this is actually my second time on campus, one for convocation and second time. But it's really a, a, it's a really special place, and I'm really proud to be a graduate. I came through the OMSCS program, uh, which I think many of you heard about. Um, I was actually the second cohort, and um, my story is kind of interesting. So I started the master's program when I was at Google. Uh, I was working there, and I was kind of bored. Uh, because you don't want really to do anything in a big tech company. <laughs> and so I wanted to, uh, wanted to do something to keep me kind of excited. My, my colleague told me, hey, you can get this top 10 degree for under $10,000. I was like, wow, that's like the best deal in town. Let me go sign up. So I signed up, started the program, and then I quit Google to start my company. And had it not been the flexibility of uh, the OMSCS program and the affordability, uh, there's no way I would have completed, right? Because I'm busy doing a startup, you're doing all these things. So really the program allowed me to continue. I could adjust my schedule, uh, flex, uh, be flexible, and then finish the program. So as I've grown the company over the years, I got a chance to finish the program and grow the company now. We're over 250 people, a lot more to do still, but it's been really exciting to be able to do all of this at the same time and get a top 10 degree. But really what, what I think I'm really proud of be here is because the vision, what it stands for, right? Giving, making education accessible to everybody. I'm very fortunate. I had a CS undergrad from a great school. I got a master's from a great school. But a lot of people don't have that option, opportunity. And Georgia Tech is one of the leading institutions 
who was willing to take a risk, you know, on the on the reputation, the brand, to make this accessible. And they've proven that not only can you make education affordable, you can actually make it affordable, scalable, and increase your reputation. As the rankings have grown, that's the way I got involved with Georgia Tech. And I, otherwise, I never would have been involved or known about the school. So it's been a great program. And I've been really honored to work with some visionary leaders here to try to make education more accessible. I think it's something that the world needs. Um, that, and you know, if you look at the, uh, the, the demand for jobs, right? Uh, um, there's way more demand than there is supply, and uh, um, and even 65% of Americans don't even have an undergraduate degree. So how do we bring access and education to more people? Um, that's one of the things I'm really excited about working with the school on uh, some initiatives there. But but really, it's uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm really grateful to be to have the award, but also really excited to see what we can do to make education more accessible. And that's I, I just the vision of the school, of the people, and everyone here doing the hard work on the ground, making education accessible. It's it's great, and I'm. Uh, I've been really fortunate, and hopefully we can make that fortune and availability to everybody. So thank you again. I'm really honored, and um, keep up the great work. Yeah, I'll do it. No, it's fine. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, there's a script here, and we skipped it. It's fine. Okay, so please join me again in congratulating uh, Candace and Henry with another round of applause. Um, so before we move on to Hall of Fame, do we have any other of uh, our uh, rising stars uh, here tonight? Do we? I can't tell because I can't see because the lights are in my eyes. Do we? Raise your hand. No? Okay, well, they're out there in the world, so let's give them a round of applause as well. All right, so let's move on to uh, the Hall of Fame, where we recognize those whose careers have shaped the college and the field of computing. And I am going to introduce to you one at a time uh, our 2023 inductees. So our first is David Oxsmith. He got his MS in ICS in 1984. Um, so he was here when we were still doing drown proofing. Uh, David has multiple titles. All of them are impressive. He is senior principal research scientist and an affiliate professor at the University of Washington. He is the chief research scientist at Darklight AI, an AI-driven cybersecurity company. Before that, he served as the senior director for Microsoft Institute for Advanced Technology and Governments and is Intel's chief of security architect. He holds 34 patents that he's allowed to talk about uh, and, by the way, has written two historical fiction novels. Please join me in welcoming David to the stage. So as you can probably guess by my gray hair, I'm not a rising star. I hope I'm not a setting star at this point in time. I'd sort of even keel would be nice. And I feel partially to blame for said for Charles leaving. I got, I got uh, nominated for this and he left. <laughs> so I promise not to do it again to the next person, but there we are. So uh, thank you very much for this. I have no idea why I'm getting it exactly, but I do appreciate it immensely. My field has been computer security for a very long time. And when I started, no one even knew what it was. I mean, this is truly a long time ago. And I remember at the time we built systems assuming everybody was doing good. I think over time we have now learned that that is not generally speaking the case. And I just hope that we have learned the lessons as we go forward. But I've had a lot of great opportunities. Like I said, when I started there was essentially no notion of computer security. And now we have a school, which I think is a tremendous thing to be said for Georgia Tech. And I encourage all of you uh, to keep that in mind when you're building something. Self-driving cars are going to have adversaries. Just keep that in mind. That's all. Thank you very much. Oh, one last thing. Uh, they arranged the timing of this uh, to celebrate my mother's 90th birthday. <laughs> so slightly delayed, but, but worth it. Thank you, sir. I highly recommend that you, you ask David about some of his, uh, some of his patents. 
uh, some of them are just sort of amazing. It's really some, some great stories there. So our, our next inductee is M. Brian Blake. Uh, he is known um, uh, by his friend, uh, from his friends as M. Dot. Uh, so I highly recommend that you call him that whenever you see him. He loves it dearly. He got his Bachelor's of Science in 1980, 1994 uh, in electrical engineering, whatever. Um, but <laughs> president, uh, he is, yeah, whatever. That smaller degree that is, you know, part of our young, whatever. It's good, it's good. They're good electrical engineers in the world. Anyway, Brian is now the president of Georgia State University, which is kind of impressive. Uh, which is, as he likes to remind me, the state's largest university. We're, we're getting there, though. Just, by, just a few thousand ago, we're going to get a few more Henry Shees and we'll be bigger than you. But Georgia State's been the largest uh, university in the state of Georgia for, I guess, about 10 years now. 10 years now. It's pretty impressive. By the way, one of these things that's interesting about Georgia State, just to, to get distracted for a minute, is um, it's an R1. It's a research one. Atlanta is one of only two cities in the country that has three research one universities in it. In our case, it's Emory, which is a small university over there somewhere about 100 miles away, because that's how long it takes to get there in traffic, uh, Georgia Tech and Georgia State uh, University. Uh, he previously served as Executive Vice President of Academic Affairs and Provost at both George Washington and Drexel Universities. He was the Dean of the Graduate School and Vice Provost at the University of Miami, Associate Dean for Research at Notre Dame, and Chair of Computer Science at Georgetown University. Um, he has done uh, me the honor of being on the College of Computing Advisory Board, um, and I think of him as a mentor and a friend. So MDOT, please join us on the stage. I can't tell you how honored and humbled I am to get this award. Uh, as I looked at the list, though, I, I can't, couldn't see how I made the cut. So <laughs> let me congratulate the other honorees because they're just they're super esteemed. So um, the only thing I can say is that uh, really, um, you know, oftentimes at my job, I, I play down the fact that I'm from Georgia Tech being at Georgia State, but I really, people know I bleed white and gold. So it's, uh, that part of it has made this award is that much more rewarding to me. Um, none of these awards come without having a better half, and today I'm joined by my better half, known at Georgia State's campus as Dr. Bridget, so uh, she's kept me in line. <laughs> thank you. You followed me across the country, and certainly uh, I wouldn't be here without you, so thank you so much, Sudi. Um, you might have a question. He's like, well, how in the heck does a Georgia Tech electrical engineer infiltrate this award. <laughs> so it's something of the story of my life. Uh, when I was uh, thinking about or contemplating getting an undergrad degree, I really wanted a computer science degree. But at that time, you know, the knowledge was that you get paid more as an electrical engineer than you would as a computer scientist. As I look around the room now and think about the country, I can make, that's so amazingly short-sighted that was. <laughs> so let me just say, um, Everything I you know, know about being me, I think uh, I learned you know, from the College of Computing here. Uh, I don't know how many people here who are engineers or computer scientists as undergrad, but man, if you ever if here, I took the undergrad Pascal course. It was when it was five hours under Russell Shackelford. I took the Fortran course, and then there was an ungodly early C course. It was the only C course in the system. It was like seven o'clock in the morning. Um, so. Uh, when I think about how difficult those courses were, I think in my head, I'm like, wow, that was the foundation of it all. It's like you knew you could do things if you could make it through those courses. Um, but I got to say, as I went further in my career, being an academic is all about how you become and stay innovative. And the College of Computing really defines that. You know, if it's not the OMS CS, if it's not Threads, um, right now, it's thinking about the college and how it's actually thinking about the future of computing, computing for all. Um, so it's been, you know, it's been my honor to be a part of the advisory board here because it's really helped me think about how to be innovative in my job. So those are the things that, you know, you can say in a phrase, just, you know, uh, how do you think out of the box? So um, I'm getting this award tonight, but it's, it's very reciprocal because I think getting this award is because I've been a part of this amazing community. So in conclusion, I want to thank the College of, community, uh, College of Computing community for this amazing um, award tonight. Um, this is just an amazing community to have an affiliation with. Um, I do want to publicly um, curse Charles. 
while I simultaneously wish him the very best, um, I want to um, send my best wishes to Sheila. <laughs> She's such a saint. Uh, take care of Charles. Try to make sure he does right. That's, that's a difficult Herculean effort, but uh, <laughs> I know you're up for it. Uh, and I just want to say thanks, everyone. Thanks for being here. Great to have this award, and go Jackets. So our third inductee uh, for this class is uh, Philip Harrison, Phil Inslow, Professor of Computing. Phil passed away last year to our great sadness, um, but we are honoring him today in memorandum. Uh, his wife Diane is here with us tonight to receive his award on his behalf. He was a pioneer in telecommunications, and in fact, the first IP router on campus was in Phil's life. Uh, he served on a senior faculty board that helped Dean Peter Freeman establish the College of Computing. And on a more personal note, uh, Phil mentored many junior faculty members who are now in senior positions guiding the college and indeed people around the world. And his legacy remains still uh, very much alive, and it is my honor uh, to be able to induct him into the Hall of Fame. Uh, Diane? Oh, no. On behalf of the uh, Enslow, Hammock, Putnell families, I'd like to thank the Georgia Tech College of Com Computing for this honor for Dr. Philip Harrison Enslow, Jr. My father was a very many-faceted man. He was a Christian, a husband, a father, a teacher, a mentor, historian, and soldier. He was generous with his time, with his knowledge. I can't speak for everyone at the Stanton Military Academy or VMI, but we've had numerous USMA classmates, along with Georgia Tech faculty and students, provide numerous testimonials as to his assistance, guidance, and particularly in double E, because he was a double E. He personally helped me with high school math. Does anyone remember slide rules? Because I don't. <laughs> he was intelligent. He was almost too smart because his audiences and classes weren't always up there with him, but were always extremely appreciative. He knew something about just about anything. <laughs> he was courageous. He went to Vietnam, a world away, in an active war zone in his mid-30s, leaving behind his family including the family cat who recognized him immediately upon his return. He also was, he left his career U.S. Army, his U.S. Army career to pursue a full-time teaching career at the university level. So that was pretty good. He was world-renowned. He earned numerous rewards and recognition in both the public and private sectors. He was awarded the Blau Award in Amsterdam for uh, international uh, telecommunications. He had a computer networks journal, one of the first in the, in the world regarding computer networks. And he became a very sought after expert witness in several patent and trademark cases. He was passionate about every hobby job, mentee, and student, almost to the extreme. He loved his black knights from USMA, West Point. Uh, by the way, does anyone need any woodworking equipment? <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to my mom, his wife, Diane, who joined him on his Georgia Tech journey. She was very involved with both ICS and College of Computing at Georgia Tech, hosting faculty and student events, as well as serving in various board positions, including president of the Georgia Tech Faculty Wives Club. And she is still a fervent Yellow Jackets fan. Go Jackets. The Enzo family has come a long way from our trip home from London, England, via San Diego, 
Jaws had just come out, dun, 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 to College Park, Georgia, which uh, was then a dry county. Oops. We moved into a wonderful, terrific new subdivision in Stone Mountain, where Phil and Diane met lifelong friends to this day. And apparently the commute on I-20 was not that bad at the time. In closing, I'd like to leave you with a story my mother, Diane, loves to tell. <laughs> at a pre-football game faculty gathering in the fall of 1975, at the library, a male professor approached her and asked where her husband worked. ICS, she answered. Oh, that new stuff. He scoffed and walked away. But just look where Georgia Tech computer science is now. Go Jackets, stamp. So it occurs to me that uh, most people here do not actually know how we uh, come to the inductee. So let me just take a moment to tell you because I think it's, it's important. It's through nomination. The people nominate uh, many people. Um, they give reasons why it makes sense uh, for people to be inducted. Um, and we go through a process and we induct a small number every year. It occurs to me that in some sense what we all want, what we all sort of hope for is immortality, right? We want to live forever. It's kind of hard to do that. But the closest that most of us will ever come is having our great-grandchildren know our names. Right? It is through the impact that we will have through the next generation and the generation after that and the generation after that. And I think for, for Phil Inslow, it's worth noting that there was a massive swell of support for him from the faculty uh, in the College of Computing who remembered the impact that he had. And we have not seen such sort of um, uh, strong support from uh, the faculty for individual people being inducted in here. And I think it's worth knowing that, that uh, that is a legacy that's worth having, that the students and their students and their student students, their children, their grandchildren and their grandchildren uh, will, in fact, have know that they have been touched and impacted by people like Philip. And I think that is worthy of a round of applause. And I hope that you take that with you. So our last inductee for the night uh, is uh, the Honorable Bev C, the Y is silent, uh, the Southeast Regional Director of the National Security Innovation Network. She has also recently served as director of our own advisory board. There's lots of wonderful uh, stories there, and there are many things behind the scenes that happened that the college has been able to do in large part be because of her, her work and her help. Previously, she was a senior executive working on modeling and simulation in the defense industry. Um, and as a senior executive. Uh, she has been named Businesswoman of the Year by I4 Magazine and the Orlando Business Journal. And in 2021, she was inducted into the Mid-Florida Business Hall of Fame. In 2022, she received the Women in Defense Service to the Flag Award. Bev, please join me on the stage. So I'm here because of my daughter, Michelle Nicole. So Michelle, um, Michelle came here in what, 2001? And the whole Georgia Tech community embraced us right away. They taught me how to become a donor. They taught me how to be involved. They taught me how to get involved as a parent. And I really embrace the whole culture. Every time I step on this campus, I feel I'm welcomed. And the College of Computing, having this advisory board, has really enabled all of us to work with you. I mean, we're not just an advisory board that comes and has a good time, meets really great people, works with wonderful people. We actually have an impact. We've had the opportunity to speak with the dean and say, what are your problems? 
And what can we do to solve? I mean, look at the brilliant people that are on this board. It's such an honor and it's such a privilege to be able to work with all of you. And um, lots of fun, right? We made a lot of impacts with uh, Threads and OMSCS. And um, I was talking to Charles earlier. I think when I first came on as chair, we were talking about strategy and how we were going to get to number five because we knew we were going to have a struggle competing with those four <laughs> that were all ranked number one. And we are number five in undergrad computing. So we did it, right? That's what a strategic plan does. And so, you know, and you look behind the scenes, I mean, he's kind of alluding to it. There was one time they were having a real struggle with the administration. They could not understand why OMS was, CS was bringing in all this money and yet their faculty were being poached and they were struggling to get the finances they need. And it's our money, you know? So I said, all right, I'll go talk to the administration. <laughs> so we set up all these appointments. I went to talk to each one from the provost, VP of research, finance, and finally I ended up with Bud. And when I went in to talk to Bud, he goes, you know, Bev, everybody was going, why is Bev coming to see us? And uh, he said, no, don't worry about it. She knows what she's doing. And he says, and oh, by the way, Bev, if it was anybody else, we wouldn't take your call. So I thought that was nice, too. <laughs> you know, and the bottom line was, this is why we're on this board. We get to bring our business experience to help solve challenges. And it was just a communication challenge, right? It was simply changing the way they were approaching the administration about their needs. I came back, I talked to Z and Charles, and we took a different approach, and you got everything you wanted, right? Yeah. So you like more, right? I'm not doing that again. Um, so anyway, it's just a great experience. It's a wonderful board, and again, I've never been on, I, I'm on a lot of boards, and I've never been on a board where they actually tell us the problems and let us help them solve them and look at the impact that we have made as a result. So thank you. This is a great honor to be up here. It's a great honor to get this award, especially coming from Charles. Thank you. Okay. Terrence has secretly walked up here to remind me, to remind you to take these. So this is chocolate, which is very good. You should have it. It's good for you. Um, it's zero calories for the purposes of this discussion. Um, and this as well, uh, which is one of these little magic things that keeps cold things cold and hot things hot. Um, I'm pretty sure it was invented by a computer scientist. It's great. Okay. So we come to the end of the program now. I would like for everyone to please once again join me in a round of applause for all of our Hall of Fame inductees. I know.